What is going on everybody? I am back with another disassembly video and I completely forgot to take apart the Caracal um, for you guys. Um, I've never taken this apart uh, since I've used it and uh, you know it's been working great. One of the very few Boker Pluses that I guess I've ever received that didn't have any like major issues yet. It flips really well, it's really smooth. About the only thing is is that uh, the centering is slightly off on the blade but that's about it. Um, so let's do a quick inspection. Um, I found out that these this will probably use a T8 for the pivot and a T6 for the rest of the uh, handle screws. But again, flipping action, very, very good. Extremely smooth. Let's see here. Okay, well, there's no blade play. So under normal circumstances, this would be uh, uh, very acceptable. Um, the lockup is maybe like 50% or so. Uh, nothing wild there. Um, <clears throat> we got a blade centering. See, it's ever so slightly off. Let's see here. Get my camera. The you see, it's ever so slightly off to the left there. Look at it from the other side. So not too bad. Okay, so as a Boker Plus, going by Boker Plus's standards, uh, this actually isn't too bad, really. Uh, pretty pathetic to say, but. Um, I'm going to go and take this apart and see what happens. I don't know if this actually allows the the clip to come off, but usually I like taking the clip off first. So let's go and start. And nope, that does not take the clip off at all. All right. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Interestingly enough, the handle scales are not coming apart, so I'm kind of wondering if there's another screw in here that I'm actually missing. Let's see. Okay, so. Okay, let's get the pivot out. Huh, look at that. Scales don't come apart very easily, so maybe it's stuck somewhere. Let's see. Not too sure how to get this apart. Now, if they uh, wanted you to be able to swip, uh, swap the pocket clips really easily, they didn't really do that very good job of that, because, let's see, this is actually... You think logically you could just take that screw out and pop the pocket clip out, but this is not coming out. Oh, there it goes. Oh boy. It's in there tight. You gotta bend the pocket clip outwards and then push up, which is, well, I guess that makes sense because then it you know puts a little bit of tension there. So there we go. So that's all it is. So you take that out. You can swap the pocket clip to the other side if you wanted to. So, okay, well, we got that part out now. Ah, well that makes sense. The pocket clip was holding the scale. Oh boy. Um, uh, okay, all right. Is this? So this one came off. So after the pocket clip comes off, this scale comes off and there's an interior screw right here. Let's go and get that out of the way and see if it loosens up the other side. Um, I'll have to remember, uh, because all the other screws are shorter than this interior screw, so I'll have to definitely remember that part of it. So now this pops off. Oh, cool, there's a little tube in there. Let's see, okay. So that goes in the middle. And then, does this side actually come off now, or... What's up with this? Take the, so this is a stop pin I just took out. Is 
Is this scale like literally fused to the other side or? Huh. It shouldn't be. There we go. <laughs> I was like, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> it just has so much grit or oil or something like that. So here's a first look at the cage bearings here. So you guys can see that. Um, your standard. Oh, this is fully enclosed though. Let's see here. Yeah, pretty. I mean, that, I guess it doesn't really acquire a lot of grease, but it is a little greasy, so take those out, clean that up. All right, so let me grab, uh, this will work. Okay, so let's get the, uh, the bearing soaking here. There you go. Good enough. Let that do its thing. All right. Okay, let's start with the uh, scales here. Let's get all this all cleaned up. Here it is, the, in the interior uh, locking side, a little bit milled out for the liner lock there. Uh, a little bit dirty. Not too bad otherwise. <clears throat> I mean, I did use it, but <clears throat> excuse me, it wasn't uh, enough to go to um, get to where it's like just completely gritty. Although there's some residue buildup right here, though. Get all that off. Yep. Yeah, all right. Good enough. All right. See what the pivot looks like. Yep, pretty much clean. <laughs> Nothing in here. A little bit. See that right there. Oh, good. The pivot is um, is notched, so it's captive. So if you can see there, um, you got a um, my camera would ever cooperate with me. You got a notched area for the pivot. And uh, that allows you to take the screw out without the entire pivot spinning. So basically you can just use one screwdriver and you won't have to use a second one. So see that right there? Perfect. All too many times I've seen where, um, where uh, knives will have, you know, the pivot would be, the pivot screw will actually be like a captive type pivot, but then you, you go look at the, 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 um, the pivot opening and it's just simply just a round, you know, circle. So there's like, well, what's the point in that, right? So, uh, it seems to be pretty dirty right here. Let's see here. There we go. Look at all that. So that's pretty, pretty dirty. Let's get this. All right. Got that all done. Let's get the back spacer. So this back spacer is very interesting because I mean, <laughs> look how thick that thing is. And you know, here's your here's your close up of the skull crusher uh, part of it, glass breaker, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just very very wicked looking. If my camera again will focus and work with me, but yeah, there it is. It's just extremely. Um, aggressive looking. Jimping here does almost literally nothing to hold your fingers in or your hand in, so it's more really decorative. Uh, you know, that's the one thing I wish that the uh, knife makers are going to put um, uh, jimping or any kind of jimping uh, on their knives. The least you can do is actually make it functional. But I mean, I heard people complain, oh, it's too sharp, it's cutting into my hands, blah de blah de blah. But you know, to be honest with you, if you're going to have a function, you might as well make it function, you know what I mean? It's just not a, doesn't make sense any other way, so. But hey, whatever, I don't make knives, so I really can't be complaining. Get this all cleaned up. There we go. I got my highly, uh, ooh, that's pretty sharp. I got my, um, very, uh, 
high polished blade here. You see my camera. <laughs> so that was done by me. Okay, well, everything was in pretty good clean order. So let's go ahead and uh, get this bad boy back together. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of grease. We're just gonna do our norm. Um, so um, I'm just gonna put one drop of grease on the detent uh, ball. It's not necessary, but I just like doing it anyhow. I'm gonna run a little bit, put a little drop there, and then using the tip of the, uh, whatever you call this bottle here, I'll just run it around the track there. We'll do the same thing for the other side. So this one drop, and then I just take it and I just spread it. So there we go, perfect. And literally, that's all you really need. Okay, so let's figure out how to put this thing back together. So because Boker insists on putting the, um, having the screw come out of the, um, the, uh, the non-show side, um, it's gonna be a little harder to put back together. So let's start with the pivot. I'll put that back on there. Whoops, maybe we should get the scale back on. Remember the pivot is notched, so it does only go in one way which is that way. I've got that. Oh, come on. Why is that going all the way back in? Hmm. Uh-oh. Well, this should be on this side. Oh, it's because I got the pivot on the wrong side. I forgot. See, I was just talking about this where they have it backwards. <laughs> and I just went ahead and put the pivot on the wrong side anyways. Okay, yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hang on here. Let me get this all. Oh, we got to clean off the pivots, but that's fine. There wasn't too much to begin with anyways. So let's go and grab these out. And uh, we'll just dump this out on here. We don't really need that anymore. Roll them around a little bit. Get them all cleaned up. There we go. Perfect. All right, we'll put one in here. Oh. Here we go. Put the other one in here. Here we are. Okay, so we're gonna have to assemble it backwards, as I call it, because I can put it on here. Here we are. This is going to go here, and then we got that, let's see, let's grab the stop pin and the little collar in the middle. So stop pin is going to go there, oops. Alright, so stop pin is going to go, boy, it just doesn't want to go back into the, there we go. So stop pin is going to go there, that goes there, then this goes in the middle one I believe. There we go. And then this goes like this. You see how it's notched out? That'll match up with that thing right there. So we gotta get this just on like that. Oop. Why is there a screw sitting here? Alright, so like that. Get the lock bar out of the way for half a second. Okay, so more or less, there it is. Let's put this little internal uh, screw back in. All right, back out. Whoops, wrong direction. All right, so we got the internal screw back in here. I'm just gonna tighten that down really quick. There we go. Get this, relieve the tension just a tiny bit. All right, so put this back on. I can only imagine how hard it is to get this clip back on because it is tensioned like this. So we'll see what happens here. All right, so let's get this side of the um, the scales on first. Grab our screws. So far, so good. Oop, 
where's the, here it is. That would be the T8. I'm gonna pull, hold the lock up a little bit and release the tension a little bit so we can get the, the scale back on. All right, there we go. You don't wanna put that screw in yet because that's what holds this thing in. So we'll go and do that last. Turn this around. We'll go and put the rest of it in there. Okay, so let's see. Oh, interestingly enough, if you look here now, the blade is dead centered. Let's see if I can get that on, on the camera here. Let's go here. Come on, focus. Look at that. A blade is now dead centered. That is uh, very interesting. Okay, so let's get the clip back on here. Let me make sure, well first let me make sure, since I do have the blade dead centered, I'm just gonna go ahead and torque these down on, you know, make sure that they're down to what they are. Blade is still centered. Let's go and get the rest of these. Give it a nice, uh, okay, that was, those weren't tight. And blade is still dead centered, cool. So. We've got one screw left over, which makes sense. And now, let's see if we can get this in here without uh, any problems. I don't know how I'm going to get this back in here because of the way that, like I said, the way that the clip is tensioned. Oh boy. Um, let's see if I. There we go. Get a little corner in there and you can just push it back in. All right, let's see if we can get the screw back in here. not quite in there. Uh, there we go. I think I got it. They did a good job with this one. So they, they did uh, make the, make the um, uh, screw um, recess. Come on camera. They did recess the head of the screw into the scale so this will not catch on your pants pockets. So this is a, a good design uh, thing from, uh, from Boker. And let's take a look here guys, this is it. Um, centering is pretty much dead on. Putting that screw in didn't really affect it very much. Um, it looks like, uh, oh maybe it's like, ever so slightly off, so maybe it did affect it, but it looks like it's pretty centered on. Action, oops, come on folks. Hello camera. There it goes. I gotta have like the slowest autofocus camera in the world. I swear to God, this thing is like a piece of crap. Hang on there. All right, so let's see. Okay, not as smooth as when I had it, so I may have to work that grease in, but hold on here. Okay, so this thing still has zero side to side play. All right, so. Yeah, so it's a little, uh, it's a little catchy at the moment, but like I said, I, I didn't give it time to work all that grease in yet, so I'll just have to actuate this until I get it back to former smoothness. But anyways, that is the uh, disassembly of the Boker Plus Caracal. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Questions or comments, uh, please leave it below. Um, aside from that, take care. Have a nice day. I'll catch you guys on the very next one.